a lot came from dermatologists who were really of non-European ancestry who started saying, hey, we, we have to do a little bit more. So then this was done by trying to get groups together to start addressing this lack of diversity. And it started with umbrella terms such as skin of color or ethnic dermatology. And I think, although the language I would say is rather unfortunate now, but back then it did a job, which is to raise an awareness that we had an issue um, that had to be addressed. But as we become smarter and wiser, we know that one of the key issues we need to do is to address the language and terminologies that we use for talking about skin color. And I think this is where the game changer is. And I've been very fortunate that I've been working as um, part of the BAD chairing uh, a group called the Derm Lexicon Group, where we are actually doing exactly this, trying to develop a new scale, new classification system for talking about skin color. And in so doing, trying to make it an objective system and also using language that is non-pejorative, you know, it doesn't add any value to skin color. So I'll step back, you know, to date, as I said, we've used terms such as skin of color, ethnic skin, you talk about people being white or black. This is completely subjective. You know, how do you define someone being white? In clinical practice research, you want to be a little bit more objective. What is skin of color? And that's a problem. So in dermatology, we used to default to something called the Fitzpatrick Skin Phototype Classification System. And this was developed by Thomas Fitzpatrick, um, who is a professor of dermatology in the US. And this talks about how skin reacts to, to sun, UV exposure and you have type one to type six skin. Initially, actually, he developed it for European skin. And then later on, other skin types were added. But again, it's subjective and people automatically will look at you where you're from and assume you must be of a certain skin type. So they will look at me and say, you must be skin type six because I had dark skin. But again, that scale was not developed to describe skin color. It was developed to look at how people's skin respond to UV. And for me, I'm actually, although I may be darkly pigmented, I'm actually very photosensitive. So this, you know, this has been a problem. So anyway, what we have developed is a new objective scale, something called the eumelanin, human skin color scale, which is based really about how much melanin people have in their skin, specifically eumelanin. And from the palest to the darkest person, we all have eumelanin, just in different amount. And what we have done is to use published data on something called um, melanin index, which looks at how your skin reflects light of a determined wavelength. And it, it gives an indication of the, how much melanin you have in your skin. We've been able to get the minimum versus maximum and divide it into five categories. So now we can talk about people being either eumelanin low, eumelanin intermediate low, eumelanin intermediate, eumelanin intermediate high or eumelanin high. And it's based on a specific objective measure called melanin index, which you can actually get if you've got a specific instrument in your clinical setting, something called a skin reflectors instrument. So now we can stop talking about people being white or black. We can actually be a little bit more specific and have an indication of how much melanin they have in their skin.